Okay? But no longer. It's going to be a return of the HRE, but on the other side, it's going to be Roost to open up this series between two qualified players for Wallow already. Indeed, as we welcome a big raid coming in here from MemTV as well. A bunch of AoE2 Ooh. fans being dropped off to us. Thank you so much, MemTV. Obviously, legendary caster of AoE2 dropping off his viewers, dropping off the Lober boys. Welcome, everybody. We're just now going to take a look at the second semifinals of the 3rd August weekly of EGC TV, Road to Red Bull Vol Legacy, and a battle between Marine Lord and Puppy Paw starting off on Kawasan. I actually love that, like, Mem Mem's, you know, knows of Vortex, he's a big fan of it. I actually love that. I, I lo that's actually someone that I love so much about um, the RTS community, is all the cross-pollination. I remember, what was it? I think, Mr. <laughs> he was, he was making, Mr. for example, was making Doubtfield old the other day, because he was in his chat <laughs> saying, like, you, you know, you're, you're my fate, you're my no number one uh, player. I loved you, I look up to you growing up. And Doubt's like, please stop saying that, you're making me feel old. <laughs> it, it, it just reminds me when I, I think I once throw a doubt on his chat, and he told me, like, I met you once. You are not cool. <laughs> so you gotta be careful what you say to Doubt because uh, he's gonna fight back. Uh, it's okay. You know, the worst case scenario, you just like, you wave your hand and old people, am I right? Right. Like, <laughs> he is the oldest competitor, right? In like Age of Empires. Uh, something along those lines. Level. I'm actually uncertain, but yeah, I mean, he's been competing since like 2000, so. I could not write or count when Doubt was already playing competitive age vampires. That should give you a pretty decent context, although I'm not a smart guy, so it's possible I wasn't able to count even one year before this time. Yeah, I love how we can now transition to the whole youthful side of things, because like <laughs> we've got one the the youngins here, right? Like Vortex, he's representing the boomers, but maybe an opportunity for the zoomers here. Puppy Paw, I believe he's 24 years old. Um, Marine Lord's a little bit more aged, I believe 28. Um, but I, I just love how, you know, it's it's kind of cool to see uh how different the dynamics are between say rts's and scenes like dota 2 csgo because some of those highlighting is like you don't really have this whole idea of coaches in these scenes so people like doubt they don't have that that kind of pivot point they're like i'm either good enough to keep playing or i'm just stopping entirely and i think it's cool because it just means you see the rival the return of people like vortex waiting in the finals but then also them clashing with the new gen of players that maybe haven't even seen the land before like puppy Paw. Then again, you know, RTS is one of those genres where you don't necessarily start becoming bad when you go old. Like, if you compare it to other esports, like let's say a shooter game, if your reflexes start to slow down, it could be the end of your career. But RTS is not so much. It could be yeah. still about strategy, it could be about execution. Your micro might slow down, but if you can compensate with good macro and good game plan, you can still offset a lot of the difference. And this is one of the more spectacular elements of competitive mm -hmm. Age of Empires in particular. You have a lot of players who are no longer as young as the other competitors, yet still compete at the highest level because they have the game sense, they have the understanding, and they have the strategical approach to make them elite players. It's about taking that wisdom and being willing to admit that you're not always right, right? And I think that's the beautiful thing to look at this matchup of Poppy Paul versus Marine Lord. Poppy Paul, very innovative player, very fresh player, very different perspectives to bring into the game. Maybe needs to work on his coaching style a little bit. I checked out some of the core coachings. Mainly it was just him telling <laughs> Core to get better, which I've told him as well, but apparently Core doesn't want to pay me for coaching. Uh, but on the other side, <laughs> Marine Lord... Do it either. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, but Marine Lord is like this guy who has a legacy, right? He's played a lot of StarCraft. He's not like deep in his 30s, but he has a lot of veterancy under his belt. But he's also kind of willing to take a fresh look at the game. And I think actually the other thing that is kind of cool to think about Marine Lord here is this is a guy that's been taking a break from AoE4 as well. So he's been kind of resetting his mind. It sounds really weird and negative to your improvement, but actually it's been proven that sometimes playing a lot less of your main game actually serves a bigger purpose in the long spree because you don't um, get bogged down in mistakes, right? You take a fresh look at things. I think Marine Lord has been averaging two or three games played a day max when someone like Puppy Paws maybe up to six or eight per day. That's a great point. It's actually, in a way, it's the Mista effect. If you think about that, you play the yeah. game too much, you're so much set up on the meta, so much set up on the same things you do over and over again, especially if most of your games are just ranked games rather than actual behind the scenes scrims. So, like we're seeing with Mista, if you can just take a couple of games every day, but behind this one, have a fresh mindset and just think about the possibilities instead of just being stunlocked at hardcore grinding the game, that can have a bigger benefit on you than just grinding the game 15 hours a day.
Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's um, the, there's different approaches. Some people just like the sweat, sweat, sweat. Some people like the um, see it and review afterwards. Um, one thing like, I, I think like pro gaming has this comparative to things like um, in my, I was a programmer, right? And one thing we used to say in programming is you get like five hours of good code. Anything afterwards is subpar. And it can actually lead to bigger problems down the line. I think there's a similar concept to be had when playing competitive. Um, after like recently being involved in the Rocket League scene, it was kind of crazy to listen to some of the pro players say that they practice two hours a day. You're like, what? <laughs> Come again? It's like, obviously there would have been a sweat, sweat, sweat to get the mechanical skill down. But then they were like, yeah, playing too much just leads to fatigue. It leads to me wanting to play less, but it also leads to me making more mistakes. And I think we're going to see if we're g if the, the person who's been spamming more, who's been feeding being the degen that's puppy poor, you know, who between coaching core and playing the game so much is probably like doing 11 or 12 hours a day, is going to be able to beat the guy who decided he just wants to go play fighting games most of the time in Marine Lord. <laughs> Gally now out here for Puppy Paw. He's the first one to land a combat ship on the pond. Marine Lord yet to reach Feudal Age over here. Kind of a pedestrian pace for the Roos over here. He wants to double down on this dock with a second pond. That should secure the spot for all of his Lordia ships to be safe. But obviously, these will be idle for the time being. So advantage Puppy Paw in there. And you see why Marine Lord was so late oh, to Feudal. Yeah. He's expanding rapidly to both ponds over here. Seriously? Rather greedy, rather risky, but could pay off. I, I think the key thing to look at here is how much bounty Marine Lord got in the end, because that's what informs the play. It makes more sense for him to make this investment if he's up at over 300 bounty, because I think he floats enough for it. It's still decent feudal timing, but he can also afford to get into the ship. 270 is not too bad, actually. I was expecting a little bit higher for this type of play. Um, the issue that he's going to run into, as you're noticing, is like you can't really compete with galleys. I think what Marine Lord wants to do is dodge death until he gets a blacksmith. Once you get a blacksmith and you get three of these Lodger attack ships out, you start to actually compare to the galleys. You can actually overwhelm them because what we have to remember is that, you know, while the Roos sea buildup is slow on the fishing side, it's actually quite cheap for the archer ships. One thing he has to respect, though, is that right now he's focusing entirely on the water, fighting on both ponds with his ships, also ready to convert some of his fishing ships possibly to combat vessels. But behind this, Puppy Paw is adding horsemen, so he could be the first one to do some land-based eco damage, and that could easily slow down Marine Lord's transition to more combat ships. And this is a power of the HRE. They get 40% superior gathering rates in the early phase of the game, and he's using that. Keep in mind that right now it is a true 40, because Marine Lord, at this stage, Hadn't set up the wooden fortress, right? He's going to be delayed on that, which means he's not even getting the 20% extra wood, which is critical in this situation. You can see the difference in numbers right now. It's two attack ships versus two. However, the galleys are as strong as at least two of the Lodgers, and it's why Marine Lord is fighting a losing battle on this lake. And he has to sacrifice those Lodja attack ships because he's trying to convert his fishing ships into combat ships, but he simply can't do that. You see, they're hiding in a corner trying to convert, oh, no. but as they do, they're going to no, get no, taken no. down. He deletes them. He deletes them. He cancels yep. them. That, again, calm down, guys. That isn't Puppy Paw hacking. That was not a demo ship in Feudal Age. Marine Lord, once you choose this investment, once you try to convert them, you can't cancel it. The only way to truly cancel it is by deleting the ships. He gets the refund, but now sacrifices one entire lake. And Puppy Paw now has the freedom to march north side and block him out on both if he chooses. Holy potatoes, this is full-on cruise control by Puppy Paw. He just took the left-hand side pawn. He's ready to go into Castle Age, and he's the only player with land-based map presence. Already has some horsemen out. This could be a short game here, KP. I mean, if you take a look at this, this is looking ugly we, for Marine Lord at best. We wondered if being a D-Gen or trying to become a fighting game pro was the better way to go. And I think we're getting a quick answer to this, okay? Puppy Paw, you know, I mentioned his coaching. But in terms of his gameplay... Well, it's still on point. And with his Ragnitz build up, he's going to take full escalatory control of the map. Marine Lord has not made a land transition. That's only now beginning. He does so from behind. He's stacking up knights. Knights take 35 seconds to build. It's going to be slow. On top of that, Puppy Paw can mirror the move, but push out Castle Age knights that will dictate flow in this mid map. And because Marine Lord is late to the knights, he's not going to be able to deny the relics. You see, Puppy Paw is already moving out for relics. The moment he hits Castle Age, he's going to pick up three relics into the hands of those prelates and start walking back home. By the time the first knight makes an appearance for Marine Lord, his opponent could already be sitting on two or three relics. And once again, it's the snowball aspect. Puppy Paw already has a pretty considerable lead, and that is just going to escalate even further with that. Yeah, honestly, with this type of position as an HRE player and this matchup against the Roos, you, if your name's Poppy Paul, you should change it to Poppy Rich. Like, he's going to be bathing in the gold, and I don't see a way in which Marine Lord's going to be able to stop him. Wallow coming out will at least prevent the relic for the nice. moment. 
But long term, I see this being easily a free or four relic game for Papa Paul. Even free is a big win for the HRE, considering the blockout you've achieved on the lakes. I agree. Like at this point, especially with three already being brought in, four is a reality. Five, possibility even. Once again, conversion coming in here. Knight actually disengaging. He's gonna play this one patiently. Could be rewarded with the prelate being killed once again. Wait, Doc... where's Papa Paul going with that? <laughs> Where he didn't was that? stop the dock. Oh, he's microing this knight. He spotted the dock, but he isn't oh, stopping no. it with the Lodia attack ship. He's just now sending the attack ship up there. Is he gonna be in time? Oh, this he is gonna will. be dicey. He, he'll be fine because uh, the damage out from the attack ship, it should be good enough. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit tight, a little bit uncomfortable, but two flurries should come oh. out and look how close it's gonna be. Construction is a failure. Poppy pool will be denied, but that was way too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort indeed. We'll lose one knight in exchange to that one. At least he saves himself from disaster, but look at that. Relic will be oh, dropped baby. off in the dock even, buffing the ships further, and also making it easier for Papipo to get an immediate return for that Relic, starting to generate gold in the very first moment of it being dropped off. At 5% attack speed buff, that means you need 20 more Lodges to be able to beat a Galley. Now I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but it, it is an inflation that makes it frustrating. The eco game just became hard to win in terms of trades. Military vessel versus military vessel. You can see Papipo. I actually like this choice to not delete the dock because it means that the attack ship, the one attack ship the Marine Lord has, has to stay on the north side. What you might see from Poppy Paul in the next 25 seconds, if he gets rid of these knights, is he might try and sneak a dock on this southern side of that lake. Yeah, exactly. He just essentially makes his opponent respect the ability of him to finish that dock at one point. In the meantime, knights are trickling into the base of Poppy Paul. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that is dirty. That is dirty. I'm really oh. like, well, I'm going to lose the knight anyway. I might as well annoy you in the process. It won't annoy him too much, though, because Poppy Paul has the third relic coming in. He's going to bank four relics. That's 800 passive gold for the HRE. This is where the night flood it begins. Look at the count. Marine Lord stuck at two. Poppy Paul already up to seven superior knights and escalating ever quicker. And Marine Lord had to sacrifice those knights to do some damage with. Every single knight he sent in was killed. So he's down to just three himself, as opposed to eight already coming out for Poppy Paul, ready to harass his lumberjacks. I think they were torching down the dock at one point as well. And as you said, four relics should allow Poppy Paul to just keep flooding those knights and completely devastate the eco of Marine Lord here. And you see Marino's reaction. He just watched Lenok lose a game by spamming Spears of the Roost. He's going to try <laughs> to do the same. Maybe a better situation to do it from, but you can see it's a panic reaction. He has to go full turtle mode. Here's the problem going full turtle mode, Lydical. Would you like to look at the map and on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being as open as my door right now with a swift breeze coming in and 1 being closed, how open is this map? Can I go 11? <laughs> Got it. So we're going for about as open as reads on me when I play poker. Yeah, something like that, we can say. And this is something that Poppy Paw is going to use to great effect. Villagers being slain under a tower over here. For now, Marine Lord has the eco lead, but you get the impression that that's not going to last very long because obviously Poppy Paw is going to keep sending in the knights. And also, Poppy Paw is still thinking about pushing that right hand side lake, which he so far has been unsuccessful pushing. Yeah, I mean, Poppy Paw doesn't care about the lake. Like, Marine Lord's just dangling in here based on that lake, but it just doesn't matter anymore. What matters more is the land transition, a transition that is incredibly difficult at this stage for Marine Lord. You can see the fifth relic now being picked up and wheeled back. I mean, Marine Lord, this is struggle central. Even if he does get a tech up, he has got a good position for a high trade house, but he's going to be losing the passive gold game, and he knows it. Yeah, he knows that really well. This product might even survive this onslaught. Knight indeed gets killed, and the product is going to survive. Might even yoink the sacred site here and then bring back the relic home. Once again, complete dominance on the right side here by Poppy Paw, and you really see that Marine Lord is struggling to do anything against this one. Stuck in Feudal Age for a time being, oh, bleeding Lordy. villagers left and right. He's not even home right now. Marine Lord moved mid-map. He just sacrificed his own <laughs> eco. They're going to go idle for a long time. He needs to build up a new line, but I'm worried. I'm so worried right now, Leda. Like, look at the count. Poppy Paw has more knights than Marine Lord has spears. We just saw that last game. <laughs> and I don't want to spoil the ending, but it wasn't exactly great for the Spears. Not at all, especially when your Spearmen are up on the front, so you have nothing back at home to defend against those Knights. Nice little stun over there on the base of Puppy Paw, but this is the problem that you're facing. Those Knights one-on-one, -on -one, they will take down the Spearmen, especially if the Spearmen are not bracing. And it doesn't matter <laughs> that back at the home. There. Yeah, look at this. The, the, Triple the perilous, perilous, actually. Look at that! Okay, th this is just a middle finger now with Poppy Paul just <laughs> simply saying, call it please, Marine Lord. Like, this is rough. You're seeing the eco-sacrifices coming out. You're seeing the 
unfair exchanges. Like, this is the power I want about the HRE. If you reach Castle Age and you just hit the spam key on your Regnets, <laughs> infinite prelate power means you have the heels of the deli at this point in the game. We talked about this a lot. The escalation potential at any point in the game for HRE is massive. And that escalation is something that Marine Lord is struggling to deal with. I mean, he's hoping for something from those spears, but realistically, those knights are killing villagers under his TC. What is he hoping in even? I, I mean, I don't know what he's hanging on for. I said that this map was basically as open as a 24-hour shot, but right now, this game is looking as closed off as a locked door. Marine Lord calls GG Poppy Paul with a swift first point on the board. Such a quick strike, and it's a punch in the stomach for Marine Lord. Think about it this way. In just 15 minutes of time, Poppy Paul moves on to match point here, here in this best of three. Oh boy, such a confident game as well. Poppy Paul, it's one thing he won. I feel like the level of confidence was the real astonishing thing here. Poppy Paul never missed the beat. Almost everything he did was crystal clear and perfect. And he punished Marine Lord for every single small misstep that Marine Lord